While he's had a storied career as an attorney and a lobbyist, not that he particularly loved lobbying, but he did it for the better part of half a century, very often donating his professional skills to good purpose, including Holocaust education. And that's the reason he's being honored tonight. But I'm one of the people who's known him almost longer than anybody in the room since my freshman year at the University of Florida in the fall of 1968. He was a law student. I was hitchhiking to get to our fraternity house. Didn't know he had been a former president. He gave me a ride. We started to talk and we've been friends ever since. He went on to become student body president at the University of Florida. And for those of you only familiar with the fights he's gotten in in his adult life, trust me, he has heritage and roots deep in controversy. You know, Miffy Holiday once said about him, Steve loves to be in the middle of a controversy and an important fight, but he wants everyone to love him. These are kind of incongruent <laughs> principles, okay? So basically, when he was president of the student body, it was the anti-Vietnam War, era, the civil rights movement, the women's movement, the environmental movement, and he was considered the first activist student body president. A couple of quick stories. He fought for black student curriculum, more black students, more black faculty, and he kept a black student protest about the lack of all those things from becoming a violent protest. That's not widely known. But one of my favorite stories when he was president of the student body is when the University of Florida, our beloved Gator Nation, um, wanted to start charging students for their football tickets, which was heresy to Steve. And he said that the university shouldn't be known for major league athletics and minor league academics. And students were all on his side. But at Gator Growl, the night before the homecoming game of 1970, the uh, contemporary to the powwow here, the night before FSU's homecoming, uh, he's in the stands with family and friends, thousands of people. And the captain of the football team was asked, how are we going to do against Auburn tomorrow? And these are the exact words he said. He said, we're going to play as if there are 22 Steve Ufelders on the other side of the ball. <laughs> Well, let me just say, the next day, Steve ran at will. Steve threw at will. Steve scored at will. In the end, it was Steve Ufelder, 63, UF 14. Congratulations. <laughs> so it's unbelievable that we're not really talking about his career and all he did as a lawyer. But everything he's done, you'll hear some about it in the videos tonight. But later, when he was chairman, of the Board of Regents when that was an important position over the state university system. He learned that the then president of the university, who I'm not going to name, had uttered a racial slur about the then black chancellor of the state university system. Here he is, a gator. He's the chancellor of the Board of Regents. And he had to tiptoe through dealing with that. He didn't tiptoe. He stepped hard and strong. And he made the president be accountable and pay for those remarks. It cost him a lot, personally and professionally. He lost clients over it, but he did the right thing. That's the Steve Ufelder we honor tonight. Also, probably few elected officials combined have the achievements that he has registered on behalf of children's and education's issues. Uh, we could spend the night talking about it, but it's a lot more programmed tonight. One example would be leading the campaign for the half penny sales tax for Leon County Schools. He chaired that campaign, raised all the money to get it passed in the high 60s or low 70% range. Thank you, Steve. We're still enjoying the benefits of that today. But typical of Steve, I mean, we have a poet laureate in Florida. If there was an official position for a state worrier, Steve should get the gig because then he would transition from worrying to coming up with an action plan to address the problem. And that's the Steve Ufelder we all know and love. So when he was being given the Child Advocate of the Year Award from what organization? What was it? Kids Incorporated, maybe 10, 15 years ago. He got up at a podium like this with a room crowded like this. He spent about 10 seconds saying thank you. And then he lectured the crowd for 15 minutes that none of us were doing enough on children's issues. <laughs> Steve Ufelder. And he, he's probably right. So that so many people in this audience uh, are achievers and doers, that you're all here, it's because we recognize in Steve an inspiration to try and mold our own lives out of. He once said that the, the best measure of a person's success is what kind of people their children become. And by that measure, Steve Ufelder 
and Miffy Holiday are two of the most successful people we'll ever know. <laughs> and that their children and grandchildren are here tonight is, is a great tribute to what an honor we're paying him. So Steve's spent a lifetime in service to others. He's earned a career which I think was his way of paying for the ability to serve. And now we honor him first with a video message from former Governor Jeb Bush. And let me just say, Steve's a lifetime Democrat, but that people who are Republicans like and respect and worked with him, no matter who was in power, is a tribute to him having that crossover appeal like a country star who rock fans like. Jeb Bush. Congratulations to my friend Steve Ufelder, who is receiving the Education Award tonight at the annual Holocaust Education Resource Council Remembrance Dinner. Steve is a true public servant, a longtime advocate for the importance of education. His efforts to establish the governor's mentoring initiative encouraged state employees to take one hour each week to mentor a child, and it led to the Florida Mentoring Partnership and the Florida Volunteer Initiative and made Florida the leading state as it relates to mentoring. He served on the Florida Board of Governors and the FSU Board of Trustees, and he did it really well. But his work to establish the Holocaust Institute for Teachers at FSU and to create a Holocaust Memorial at the Capitol are what we honor tonight. These efforts were critical to ensure that we never forget the lessons of the Holocaust. As Steve often says, the greatest weapon against hate is education. Steve, thank you for your service to so many, and thanks to the HERC for their important work. God bless. So, as a, a little pacer before the, the key other video, uh, representatives of the city and county have special proclamations in Steve's honor, if they could please come forward. We've got county commission chair coming in, sir. And rather than read the, all the whereas is, just get to the therefore. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ron. Hello everybody, my name is Rick Miner. I'm the uh, Leon County Commissioner representing District 3. Uh, very proud to represent the Leon County Board of County Commissioners to uh, present a proclamation honoring the great Steve Ufelder for all his work. Uh, not just for this community, not just for this state, but for helping to increase education about the Holocaust. Very, very important issue, especially now. So thank you very much, Steve. It's really an honor. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. I am not an elected official, and I am not the mayor, but uh, the mayor did want to express uh, his uh, congratulations. Uh, there's a city commission meeting this evening, and he could not be here, so he did uh, provide this proclamation. Ron, I'll no, let, go ahead. Give okay. the I'll, uh, I'll give the key parts, uh, whereas Holocaust Education Week in Florida is held annually the second week in November, which coincides with the anniversary of Kristallnacht, November 9th and 10th, 1938, a major turning point in the prosecution in the persecution of European Jews by the Nazi regime, and whereas the Holocaust Education Resource Council, HERC, provides instructional guidance, support, and resources for educators who teach the history of the Holocaust and educational programs for the community at large. And there's a bunch of whereas's about all the awesome stuff that Steve has done that he will read later. Uh, whereas, uh, Yulfelder launched significant legislation for the Holocaust Memorial. Now, therefore, I, John E. Daly, by the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Tallahassee, do hereby recognize Stephen J. Yulfelder for his great accomplishments and contributions to our community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask Daniel to hold these for his dad. And uh, Charlie Belvin, award winning. Emmy Award winning uh, television producer, friend of many here, when he produces a video to try and tell someone's story through the perspective of friends and family, it's like nothing you've ever seen. So we're going to roll this great Charlie Bell the nine minute video, and then we're going to honor our honoree in person. So roll tape. The beach was a place where they found peace and, you know, coming here to the beach and being here was just such a good thing for him to get away from Tallahassee and, 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 and 
so they always were down here and they had this, he had this kayak and he would go out in, in the Gulf of Mexico and he just thought this was so funny and he would come back and he'd be like, <sighs> and there'd be people all over the beach and he'd be like, is this America? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, like, people would just die, like, you know, like, oh, he is so funny. You know, the, uh, uh, he's not really playing a character, but Larry David's show, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay, that is Steve Ufeller. We'd go to San Francisco, we'd be at the Golden Gate Bridge, and he'd ask people, do you know how we can get to the Golden Gate Bridge? And how many people would actually take him seriously? And growing up, America would go through the drive through We would never get McDonald's. I mean, yeah. like, we were like, that was the biggest treat. So he would go through backwards. Yeah, I do that now. Oh, you do? Great. Yeah, we drive through I backwards. don't. But he go, would go through, <laughs> go through backwards, back. reverse It's fine. Through. It really throws him off. He called me up. And he said, hey, I want you to think about coming to work with me. And he goes, and why don't you take a few days and, and, and think about it and talk to some people about it. So he called me back like two hours later. Not a few days, two hours later. And then he called me back two hours after that and then the next day and the next day. Of course, I have some of the same traits that he does. So I had already been on the phone talking to people. And so I was told it's either going to be the best thing you ever did or the worst thing you ever did. That was the advice I was given that I remember most clearly. I can remember that one day he emailed me 60 times. I counted them to see at the end of the day how many responses I had made. But it was because he was so passionate, he would keep coming up with these great ideas, right? So, well, we've got to get this company on board. And what about this person as a spokesperson? And when's our next meeting? Yeah, if, if we were on, typically when we had meetings with our case manager, they were virtual because she was in another county. And Steve would not back down. If he had to ask a question or get a service in place for our son, he would just keep asking and be the squeaky wheel until it happened. He has an edge to him. He's super bright and he really ruminates things. Uh, things sink, sink in with Steve. He has a very high standards. He's a deep thinker and he carries it with him. He doesn't let go. That's just a character trait that for the full 50 years that I've been with him. Um, you don't push Steve to the side. He hangs in there big time. I think, especially in the fields that Steve's worked in over the years, there's a lot of people who are doing things for their own benefit. And it's obvious, right? Steve is one of those people who has integrity, and when he believes something is right, he doesn't mind getting people together around the idea, and he doesn't, he doesn't waver on it. If something's the right thing to do, you do it, regardless of what political ideology you have, what party wants it done, you do it because it's the right thing. I mean, Steve has been involved in, he helped start and, and get Governor Bush to fund a mentoring initiative, you know, for high school students in disadvantaged situations. He personally was a mentor to students in Leon County for 30 years. And when the hurricanes in 2004 hit, Hurricane Charlie was the first, and then it was like, bang, 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 we got hit all over the state. And again, Steve worked with Governor Bush to say, let's start a hurricane relief fund. And um, they pulled me in to, of course, be the executive director and work with them, and Steve and some other folks were chairman and served on the board. But that, again, was Steve's idea. And every time people are down for the count and he sees that something's gonna be terrifically horrible. I hate, I don't even know how else to say it because I know he reacted the same way after the BP oil spill. He was immediately like, what are we doing? How are we gonna help people? If he, if, I just remember my parents saying, you know, doing nothing is just, when something bad is going down, it's just as bad as doing nothing. I mean, if you just sit on the sidelines watching something really horrible or going to be horrible is just as bad as participating. Um, so it's not just a talking thing with him. It's a hands-on, you know, every day, something that he does. He does a whole lot more of this than I've ever done. I mean, 
kind of shames a lot of us that you know we write a check you know or occasionally show up somewhere Steve not only gives uh, money and 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 brain power to something he he actually goes and does the work himself so and I think that what people really need to know is that this is not a man looking for attention this is not a man looking for something to do this is a man that is out there doing it because his heart and drives him to do it and he's doing it all for the goodness of everybody else and it's what really keeps him going I mean because he wants to do for other people all the time that's what he does and he doesn't do for himself and so you know ever I mean he is the most unselfish person I've ever met in my entire life the most unselfish person Well, Steve started this. <laughs> I don't know if you know that, but this was Steve's uh, brainchild. Uh, yes, I mean, this that's why Steve's being honored here. Uh, I don't, you'd have to find out the number of years ago, but you, you know the history, you know, Steve's family uh, perished in the Holocaust uh, at Theresienstadt. Um, and Steve began, I would, I would call it 15 years ago, Barbara would certainly know exactly the date, and Steve would, um, but it, this initiative to put into law that we would have a curriculum and teach students about the Holocaust. Yeah, um, Barbara Goldstein's, um, Steve Ufelder's family, my family, all were persecuted. Uh, my parents were from, uh, my mother's from Berlin and my father's from Vienna. They met in Shanghai. I was born in China. A lot of people don't know that. But, you know, Steve's parents went through hell too. And so um, tonight in this crowd, Barbara Goldstein, Steve Ufelder, and Andy Reese all were affected by the Holocaust. And so this is a fitting tribute. While he is very funny and he has a great sense of humor, he's also very intentional about the stuff he does care about, which is, of course, everything that we're here for dinner about tonight, which is Holocaust education, Holocaust remembrance, and, of course, uh, making sure we never forget. And I hope those that came tonight will consider staying involved, because that's what Steve does when he joins something. He stays with it and he makes things happen. and so. To the extent that people can do that in their hearts, somehow help in some way, whether it's you know through prayers or through giving money on an annual basis, I think that's, I don't think Steve would do it for any other reason other than he's very passionate about this cause and he wants people to pay attention to it. Not let this Holocaust go unremembered, but to make sure you're willing to talk about it and tell those stories after the last person has died. Thank you all for being here. It's a really great honor to have so many friends, family members, particularly my family here at this table. They have five lovely grandchildren, wonderful son and daughter. Son that happens to be very courageous. Um, my daughter is one of the most loving people I've ever met, and she's an outstanding individual. I want to thank them for all being here. It's, I want to thank Barbara. It just, this organization wouldn't exist without her, and she's done more to promote Holocaust education in this state than any other person. And I, really, <laughs> Uncle Willie, who my cousin mentioned, was my father. He was the first one up the ship when his sister Sam and his brother came from Germany. And uh, my father always told me, stand up for what you believe in. 
people didn't do that in Germany. It's, we live in a very fragile democracy today. There's a lot of division, a lot of hatred, a lot of misunderstanding, a lack of caring. The Holocaust didn't start in gas chambers. It started with words. And words have meaning and they have a true great impact. And today's words are so nasty. When you see what happened on January 6th, you begin to wonder how we hold this country together unless we're strong and we do what's right. Not what's politically correct always, but what's right. And if we do that, we can survive in this democracy. But I'm afraid if people don't stand up for what they believe in and don't really take, get involved in politics. This country is going to have tremendous difficulties over the years. Bad men need not do nothing more to achieve their goals and their ends than good men should look on and do nothing. And I'm going to leave you with one word. There's a lot of wrong, a lot of good, but the wrong needs help. And those that don't have the advantages we all have deserve much better. And I'm a great believer in, in education. I'm so proud there's so many educators here and students because they're the ones that are gonna carry on the future. And these, these kids here, you may never see a Holocaust survivor after tonight, or may not, my cousin may be one of the last survivors. But we got to remember that these people went through, and if you stay silent and you let what's going on in this country continue to go on with the hatred, I worry and I pray. But with strong people and people standing for what they believe in, we can do better. And this can, once again, bring together, together this country. Thank you.